Hi everyone, Cheryl from Gems Out here. Um, I'm here today to share with you guys part three of the tutorial for um, my 6x6 six six mini album. So um, what I'm going to cover today, um, hopefully I can cover this in part three, will be the measurements that you'll need for your mats um, for the pages. And then also I'm hoping that we can cover um, the dimensions and everything that we need to make the actual book. So you the two covers as well as the spine. So let me go ahead and get started because I want to try to keep this segment as well um, to 20 minutes or under. Okay, so um, the layout, the way this is going to work is you guys have um, six base pages. <clears throat> you have two flaps, or should I say you have two short flaps, and then you have four um, flaps that open up for a four-page spread, okay? So let me give you the measurements. Oh, and then you also have tags. I think I forgot to tell you this in the first video. There are six tags. Um for the top okay those tags let me give you that first now before I forget because I will forget so for the tags <clears throat> excuse me which will be this okay double sided tag for the tags you're gonna need to um, cut your paper um, to five and a half by six okay you may have some scraps left over where you'll be able to do that. If not, um, cut them to five and a half by six. You're gonna need six of those because you have six base pages, so you're gonna have six tags as well. Okay, when you do that, you are going to, your mat for this is going to be five and a quarter by five and three quarters. Okay, now be careful when you cut paper, especially if it has um, a particular uh, pattern to it. So you need it to be um, to go a particular way. So, for instance, if there was this piece right here was a tag, be careful because these little frogs are going um, this way. So you can't just cut it any old kind of way and it will fit. Um, just a um, a hint or a tip or whatever. Um, just be careful um, when you're cutting the tags because they're not the same dimension lengthwise as well as widthwise that you pay attention. To the direction of the pattern paper okay so again for the tags you're going to need to cut some paper at five and a half by six and then the mat for the tag itself is five and a quarter by five and three quarters okay now for the flap <clears throat> and again the flap is um, I'm only putting a flap on the front page and then the very last page okay so for the mats for the flaps, that is, let's see, five and a quarter by five and a quarter, okay? So again, that's this flap here, okay? Um, now again, I only made two of these top flaps. You guys feel free to make as many as you want. Just know that the, um, the mat size for it is five and a quarter by five and a quarter. Okay, now for the full page, as well as... Um, these flaps that open out for a four page spread okay I know I can't get all of this in camera um, <clears throat> that is five and three quarters by five and three quarters okay now you guys also um, had a nine pick is this the nine yeah there was also a nine pick um like photo op, so to speak, um, the one that's like this. So it'll hold nine pictures. The mats for this is four by four, okay? Then you have another one that holds um, seven pictures. And so that one looks like this, okay? This one, your mats for this is four and a quarter by four and a quarter, okay? Um, oh, what I did on this one, um, when I matted my pages, I rounded the corners only on the sides that had, um, a rounded corner. Now it's totally up to you. If you want to round all of your corners, you can do that. I did that with one of the other albums and it was fine. I liked it. Um, but I decided for the other two that I would only round the corners, excuse me, only where I was, um, 
only where I actually rounded the corner instead of rounding all of them. Only rounded the corners only, you know, where it is. So like, for instance, this one right here, only one corner is rounded. The rest of them are square. Okay. So it's totally up to you how you guys want to do it. That was just my preference. And I did that for both um, of the mats. Now, I am missing. Is that all the, the, the I'm just checking my, um, cheat cheat <laughs> that has all of my notes written on I'm just making sure that I did not forget to tell you guys anything okay so for the full page it's five and three quarters by five and three quarters the top flap here this is five and a quarter by five and a quarter for the nine picture um, photo op that's four and a quarter by four and a quarter and then for the seven picture photo op that one is four and a quarter by four and a quarter and then your tags, the mat for that is five and a quarter by five and three quarters. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let me go ahead and move this out the way. And then I can show you what I did for, okay, I'm only at six minutes. So I'll show you what I did for the um, cover. So what I did was um, for your covers, you're going to need chipboard and paper. So what I did was I cut my chipboard out. Um, you're gonna need two eight by eight pieces and then one four by eight piece, okay? So what I did, or what I always do when I make my books is I have two pieces of chipboard and I actually um, cut them out twice and glue them together only because I want it to be um, stable and I hot glue them together so that they don't bend at all. When you just use, you know, just a regular piece of chipboard, at least the size that I use, because I think this is the 0.28 um, weight. It is, it bends a little bit. So what I do is I just cut it out twice, hot glue it together, so it gives it some stability, so it is kind of thick. So that's what I do. You guys can do, you know, whatever it is that you're used to or whatever it is, you know, that you're comfortable with. This is just my preference and what I do. Okay. So what you do is. <clears throat> These pieces of paper for the um, chipboard, again, that is going to be 8 by 8 for your front cover and your back cover. So this piece here and this piece here. And then for the spine, that is going to be 4 by 8. Okay. Now, for the paper, <clears throat> the paper that I use, this is the one that I used for the cover. This is the one that I used for the spine. And this is just craft cardstock because I'm going to cover it up with ribbon. And then this right here is paper from the collection as well. Okay, so what I did is the two covers, <clears throat> the front piece and the back piece, for your cardstock or pattern paper or whatever it is that you're using, that is going to be, you need to cut that at 8 by 8, okay? And then for the spine, the piece that you're using for the spine, you need to cut that at 3, um, no, I'm sorry, not 3, 4 by 8, okay? Um, and all I did was I um, put some ATG tape down and just started one by one by one, okay? And I'm actually going to walk you through that only because I know some of you guys may be new and not sure how you actually adhere it. But I just wanted to kind of show you what it looks like here before I actually um, put it together, okay? So that's it. All right, so... Let's go ahead and get started. I've already pre-cut and hot glued my pieces because, you know, I just really did not want it to take that long. Okay, so here we have my front cover, spine, back cover. Okay, now what I start with, and this is just me, I always start with my spine only because it makes it a lot easier for me to be able to add the front cover and the back cover. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ATG gun. And all I'm going to do is um, put just a little, um, like a strip of uh, tape on here, just so it can act as my um, stability and hold it down, okay? So that's all I'm doing. Sorry about my hand being in the way, but I didn't want to be off camera. And so all you do is, once you put that on there, you're going to center it um, on your paper, okay? And that's all I did. I know it's kind of hard to see because it is craft on craft. But all I did was I centered it, okay? And then <clears throat> what you're going to do is I take a piece of score tape, some strong adhesive. Um, I guess you could use ATG tape, but I prefer the score tape. Um, only because, and I'll tell you why. 
because you needed to adhere to this and you do not want it to come up okay that's the only reason why I use score tape otherwise I would use ATG tape <clears throat> but because I want it to stay stuck on here and not go anywhere even though I am going to be covering this with the ribbon um, I think score tape is the best okay so let me go ahead and do that now and so all I'm doing I'm only putting it on the edge here I don't need to take it um, all the way around um, I guess if you really wanted to you could but um, for me this works out just fine okay so you don't need to take that off just yet you can actually put this one to the side and now for your other covers <clears throat> the front cover and the back cover um, you just need to go ahead and place that one down as well so again I take my ATG gun and I usually put because this is 8 by 8 no I'm sorry this is 7 by 7 the paper is 8 by 8 I'm actually gonna put three strips down only because I want it to um, stick really well sorry about that if you heard that that was my um, phone going off I forgot to turn it down and put it on vibrate and again all you're doing is you're just putting this on here and you um, putting it adhering it to the paper and you are just centering it okay that's all I'm doing this one is easier to see obviously because it's white and craft okay so that's all I'm doing and so I'll put that one to the side take my other piece and then do the same thing okay <clears throat> and then um, once we get to the lining I'll give you the measurement for the lining but I'm really trying not to confuse you guys <laughs> Only because I know if I give um, too many things and I start getting all over the place, um, I know if I get confused, you guys get confused. So I will try to stay on point as much as possible. Okay, so now that you have all of your pieces, um, turn them over <clears throat> and just two. Let's see, this is fine. All right, so if this is my front cover, that means that the front cover needs to be this way. This piece needs to go here. Okay, and then this one, the back piece, because it really doesn't matter because of the pattern, and I did that on purpose, it can kind of go like right here. Okay, so now what you should do, all I did was I kind of fitted the, them together like that okay so all you do now and you don't have to necessarily do that and actually I did this one wrong the spine the piece the covers for the spine or let me start over this piece right here should overlap the front and the back that was what I was trying to say and it was not coming out right so again with your front cover and your back cover your spine <clears throat> that piece should overlap on the front and on the back okay just like that all right, now all I'm gonna do is flip this over so that I can actually um, make sure that I have a quarter of an inch in between each of these pieces of chipboard, okay? All you need is a quarter of an inch. Um, you can have it, you can make it a little bigger if you would like, um, but I usually do just a quarter of an inch. And the reason why is because you need to be able to bend um, to fold it up so that um, let me get my other one so that it can fold like this that's why you need a quarter of an inch gap and if you notice in here there's a quarter of an inch okay all right now <clears throat> all right so I have about that's about a quarter of an inch there usually what I do I know I am off camera, but give me one second. Or should I say out of frame? One second, there we go. All right, so a quarter of an inch here. Okay, a quarter of an inch here. 
Now, if you want to make this a little easier on you, you can put um, score tape down at the bottom right here. And that way, all you have to do is peel that off. Me, all I'm going to do is remember how we put score tape. Let me zoom in so you guys can see. Remember how I put score tape running down this piece on this side as well as this side? All I'm going to do is take my scissors and snip this little piece off so that um, I can just go ahead and stick that down. Okay? That's all I'm going to do. And I'm going to do that on both sides just so it makes it easier for me. And I'm just using my scissors. So I'm going to do that on both sides. Again, just make sure that you have a quarter of an inch. Okay. So it's a quarter of an inch, a quarter of an inch. Now, when you rotate this around, be careful, okay, because you don't want it to slip or anything like that and that's all I'm doing is rotating if it does slip it's okay because it's taped at the bottom and you just um, need to fix it back so like mine did slip out a little bit at the top all you do is just lift it back up and then go ahead and position it back the way you need it to be okay so if you see in the camera it looks like it's about a quarter of an inch so again all I'm gonna do is lift this piece back up right here and right there um, cut that piece right there so again if it's easier for you guys just to put a strip of score tape right here along this bottom piece that way all you have to do is you know take that off and then glue you know it'll fit down that way go right ahead um, I actually didn't think about that until after I did this until after I started doing this video sorry about that I did not mean to check the camera otherwise I would have done that um, so again all I'm doing on this side is um, Spreading it back out to make sure that I have a quarter of an inch. Lifting this up. And then um, cutting off that piece so that I can adhere this down. Okay. Now. <clears throat> move this out the way. Alright, so now that I have that, all I'm going to do now is um, flip this over. And then you guys can actually see. I know that popped off, but I'll put it back in a second. Okay, actually, they both popped off. Let's see. All right, don't try this at home. <laughs> all right, all I'm doing is lifting this back up, putting this back in, and positioning it back um, for a quarter of an inch. Um, so definitely don't do what I did. Put your score um, tape um, down at the bottom here because it seems like that's actually going to be easier for you. Um, unless, you know, you're okay doing it this way. Okay, so all I'm going to do is turn this back over and just smooth this back down to make sure that it doesn't pop up, okay? And then... Let's get the other side. Something just dropped. I'm not sure what, though. Um, all right, so all I'm doing is lifting this um, tape, the liner for the tape. Okay. Let's turn this back over because it lifted up. Not what I wanted it to do. Okay, and then I'm just going to stick this down. Now... Just go ahead and smooth it down on the other side. And if you notice, <clears throat> right here, it's off center a little bit. That's okay because this gets folded down. Okay, that's why we have a half of an inch, about a half of an inch overhang at the top, um, at the bottom, and on the sides. So that when you fold this down, it will be perfect. So it is okay if, you know, you have a little bit of an overhang there. I don't know if you guys can see that too well, but it's not even. It's off by just a little bit, and that again, that's okay. All right, so now um, <clears throat> I pop this up right here because this piece right here is um, 
on the open or not on the open but it's not adhered down and I don't want it to be like that I do want this adhered down all I'm gonna do is take my ATG gun and run some tape right along there you can use score tape if you like um, because it is on the inside the ATG tape works just fine so when you move this back remember that you have to tuck this back underneath the chipboard okay and then you just move that down and then you're going to repeat the process for the other side i usually just rotate it um and then i pop it over so that this piece lays um lays kind of flat like this and then just take the atg gun and then just run it down okay um <clears throat> And this has been working for me with all of my um, mini albums that I've been doing. This is the way that I've done it in the past. And it seems to work just fine. I haven't had um, any problems or had anyone say that it came loose or that was an issue or anything like that. So, um, like I said, this has been working for me. I was just trying to rub out some of that extra glue, but there we go. All right. So now what you're going to do is you're going to start. Um, oh. Let's miter our corners first. Um, for those of you who don't like to miter, if you want to fold your corners up like this, you can go ahead and do that if you want. I want it to be a very, very clean look. Um, so I'm actually going to miter my corners. So all I'm going to do is get close to the edge, but not too close. You need to leave a little bit of space. And I usually just eyeball it. Um, so if you can see, there's a little bit of space there. Okay, and so I'm going to do that for all four corners. Okay, that's two, three, and then here is four. Okay, I'm going to now, okay, I'm already just at 22 minutes. So let me go ahead and do... Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and finish this out and then I'll come back with another piece to um, give you the measurements for the lining and everything. So what you do now is um, all I'm doing is I'm folding this um, paper up along the side, your extra half inch. All I'm doing is folding that up, kind of flexing it and molding it only because I want to make it easy so that when I put my score tape down to adhere this down, it makes it easier to fold because I'm kind of flexing it and molding it in place already, okay? You widen back out, sorry about that. Let me widen back out so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay. And again, all I'm doing is just flexing the paper, um, kind of molding it so that when I do get ready to um, I'm going to do get ready to stick it down. It'll be okay. And then after you've done that, I would um, go ahead and kind of flex your book into place so that, you know, the paper actually gets used to you folding it. Okay. And just make sure that while you're doing, while you're folding it, you know, into place, you're smoothing out your edges that are adhered to each other. Okay. That's all I'm doing. So now let's do the other side. And again, this is why I wanted it to be adhered with um, score tape as opposed to ATG tape. ATG tape has a stronger hold. Okay. And so that's all I'm doing. So that now, if you notice, it folds really easily. Obviously, once you put the, um, the hinges and the papers in there, it won't clump down like this. But at least you realize, or not realize, but you can see the book taking shape now. Okay. All right. So all I'm going to do now is I am going to um, line these edges with score tape and I'm only going to put the score tape on the chipboard and it's only um, lengthwise. Do not overlap your gaps, okay, because you need your book to be able to bend. If you put the tape there, it's going to get stuck, it's going to get glue and it won't bend back and forth so easily, okay. So let me go ahead and get started. Let's see. Um, let's see if I can get this in frame. Okay. All right. So again, you're just gonna line it all the way to the edge to each piece, 
And like this one, I went over a little bit. I just flipped that up right there and then I'll make sure I fold that over um, once I get ready to take the tape off. Okay. That's all I'm doing is just lining the um, edges of the book with the score tape. <clears throat> now, if you guys have any questions um, with this tutorial, um, please let me know. I know I had someone um, who sent me a question earlier after she watched, um, I think it was part one, maybe it was part two. No, I think it was part two. I think she was asking me if I um, use Tyvek, and I do. I do use Tyvek on the spine, but the way she was asking if I used it, um, I use Tyvek kind of like at the last minute, so to speak. And I am going to use it on this tutorial as well. And I'll show you guys where um, just to make it so that it's the book a little stronger. Um, and I actually already have it cut out um, just to save on time to make it easier. Okay. So I'm almost done um, with lining the perimeter of the book with score tape. Let's see. All right. So this is the last one. So what I do is um, <clears throat> once I have the score tape down, I know I was doing that a little slow and I'm sorry, but... <laughs> Uh, I want to make sure that I got it all stuck down right. Okay, all I'm doing is just smoothing it down just a little bit to make it so that it has a little bit of a better stick. And then now you just peel it off. Okay. So, um, once you have it peeled off, <clears throat> then you'll be able to stick your edges down. Okay, and I'll walk you through that process as well. Mm -mm. I'm just knocking stuff down. Okay, last piece, there we go. All right, so what I normally do is I usually um, fold, I start at one end and work my way around. So this is why um, I was actually folding the paper up so that it kind of get used to it. Um, that way when I do get ready to fold it down, it won't be a problem. So let me zoom in just a bit. Okay. So again, you just fold it down. Um, I usually fold it um, all the edges down first before I reinforce. Okay. So now when you get here, because this is the long piece, um, actually I'll fold down the other edge that way when I widen back out <clears throat> I'll be okay okay so all I'm doing is just sticking that down and so here now once we're here because it's the long piece all I'm going to do is I usually start in the middle and then I'll go down and fold down the one end and obviously I did this one wrong because it's a little short, but I'll be able to cover that up with um, the lining because my lining is um, really only an eighth of an inch. Actually, I did that for all of them. Okay, it is late. Obviously, I should have waited to do this, but this book is going to work. <laughs> all right, so all I'm doing is um, folding this down. Okay, almost done. All right, so now that you're done, <clears throat> what you do is you take your bone folder and just reinforce those folds, okay? Because you don't want them to come up. They shouldn't come up anyway, simply because you are using score tape, but um, still, I would just reinforce them. All right, there go my measurements, but hopefully I don't need them anymore. If I do, I'll grab them, because those just fell. All right, so once you do that, after you've done that, <clears throat> um, I usually take my bone folder right in the crease where the book folds and just um, fold those down so that it bends easy, okay? And then I actually bend the book up as I'm doing that so that it makes it easier to bend, okay? And so now, here's your book, okay? All right, so <clears throat> for your 
um, lining. The lining is going to be, you're going to need two 12 by 12 sheets of paper. Um, well, at least that's what I did. Um, I cut two 12 by 12 sheets of paper and what I did was I cut it down to six and seven eighths by 12. Okay. Um, this is from a different paper stack. It's not the baby boy paper stack. This is the Nana's baby boy paper stack, I believe. Um, but I thought the colors still went well. And so if you look, let's see, widen this out. Sorry about the stripes for those of you guys who don't like stripes. One of my goddaughters is like, stripes give me headaches. I'm like, you're 10. Give me a break. Really? <laughs> so if you look, oh, you can see those edges a little bit. It isn't quite covering it like I wanted it to. Darn it. All right. I have to fix that on the other end. So obviously because I have two, I'm going to take the other one. Come on now. This one's done. Let me go ahead and use this one. I'll fix that another way. Maybe I'll line the inside of the book with something. I don't know. We'll see. Um, okay. What you do is you, um, uh, I don't want to do this. Okay. I'll start with this end. Um, now <clears throat> you have the option of, and I know that this is, um, kind of big or should I say it's long? So all of it isn't going to fit in frame. W what I'm saying is that you have the option to either start um, the lining at one end and then where it ends you pick it back up with the rest of it you just need to measure it and figure out how much you need and then cut off the rest or what some people do is that they measure so that it's even and it meets up right in the middle of the spine piece you know so that it isn't um, as noticeable um, so it's totally, totally up to you how you decide that you really want to do this. Um, I usually go ahead and take one 12 by 12 sheet of paper and go ahead and adhere it down and then um, look to see how much I need in excess. And then I just cut that so that that works. It's totally up to you what you decide that you want to do. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the camera now because I'm already at 32, almost 33 minutes. And then I'll come back with um, the next piece, excuse me, of adhering the lining down and then also adhering the hinge down. OK, so I'll be back in a couple of minutes. 